Hello and welcome back to Geo's View. I am your host, Geo Bataglia. I'm Antonina Tortorello. And I'm Kat Bown. Before we get into this week's topics, we have something exciting to share. The official logo for Geo's View is here. Take a look. The logo was designed by SUNY Brockport student Cambry Ucker, and I think it perfectly captures the energy of our show. Thank you, Cambry, and let's get talking. Eight fans were killed and hundreds suffered injuries during Travis Scott's Astro World Festival in Houston last week. Houston's police chief and fire chief say they expressed their concerns for public safety before the show. Fans said they tried to alert Travis and his team to stop the show when the chaos began, but were ignored. At least 18 lawsuits have been filed, which include both Scott and Drake for negligence and, quote, inciting the crowd. Do you think Scott and his team are to blame, or do you think they did what they could do? Kat, let's start with you. So definitely, um, I feel like definitely Scott, uh, Travis Scott should be put in some blame, but he is just the performer. He's just the face, the his manager, his production team, the people who set everything up and, like, should be the ones to blame, like the real ones to blame. Antonina? Yeah, so the situation was really, really sad and really awful. I was watching um, the festival on my phone live. Obviously, I had no idea what was going on, but I think when it comes to a point where you have fans and people in the crowd physically screaming and chanting, stop the show, stop the show, and Travis is like still enticing people to jump off of, like I saw that one person was paralyzed, because they jumped off of like some higher platform at the Travis show because Travis is like, what, you're not gonna do it? So just weird things like that that happened. I don't entirely blame Travis Scott, but he definitely, definitely could have done something more. Mm -hmm. I see, I, I was on Instagram and people were comparing Travis's performance to other people's performances where um, in the crowd, someone in the crowd gets hurt. The per other performers were like, stop the music completely make sure they're okay, and then continue when they're okay. Travis just kept going, and he, he definitely should have stopped and let everyone breathe, or else we probably, there was 11 people which still could be alive. I think a lot of people say um, if, you know, what could Travis have done? There was people in the crowd going insane. You can't um, contain people when they're in that level of hype, for lack of a better word, but I think he was the only one who really had any power in that situation, I, and I don't think he took advantage of it. Yeah, it was really sad. Yeah, definitely sending our thoughts to the, the families, families and friends affected. of those who were affected. Anna Ferris was trending on Twitter last week after people were bringing attention to her ex-husband, Chris Pratt, on Instagram in a post. He praised his new wife, saying, she's given me amazing life and a gorgeous, healthy daughter. Anna Ferris has been open about her son Jack's health issues. Do you guys think this was a poor choice of word on Pratt's end, or is there some intention behind his post? Gio, let's start with you. So when I read this initially, um, I didn't really think anything of it, and then I did some research about Ferris and the family. And I think, you know, when you're in that sort of honeymoon phase, like you're just freshly married, um, and you're welcoming a beautiful new child into the world. I think you can kind of be in that la-la state of mind and not really think about um, what you're saying. So I think we could give Pratt a pass on that one. I do think though, when someone like Anna Ferris reads it and has a history with Chris Pratt and you know is dealing with her child, I could see how that got some ill taste in her mouth. I know the reaction was not nice. A lot of people were mad at Chris Pratt, but I think it could have been maybe avoided or changed if someone in like the PR team had looked over it or something. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely. Um, with celebrities and people under a magnifying glass, they have to really watch what they post, um, especially to do with their family um, that could offend other people by what they're saying. I think that someone should look at the post and be like, okay, this sounds good, doesn't raise any concerns, doesn't raise any questions and like you're good to post it. But I think that it is important for celebrities to have something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I do think Chris Pratt should get some sort of like alleviation on this. Like, I don't even think he was even like thinking in that sort of way to hurt anybody and especially his own child. So I think he was just excited about the one child he was thinking about. And I don't 
think he meant it in any bad way at all. And I think also he could have been looking at both children as happy and beautiful children. So mm -hmm. I think that it could have not even phased his mind, but to people reading that, they could be giving their opinion and kind of making that trump what Pratt really yeah, actually Yeah, and meant. just like making, blowing things out of proportion and making up theories and like not even understanding what was going through his mind when he was even making the tweet. Mm -hmm. So people don't really know. Yeah, I agree. Taylor Swift is set to release her version of Red this Friday. The album contains the 30 songs that were originally intended for the album, including the all too well 10 minute version. It'll be accompanied with a short film starring Swift, Sadie Sink, and Dylan O'Brien. Swift will be on SNL this Saturday as the musical guest, as well as a collaboration with Starbucks. How do you guys feel when you look back at when you first heard the songs in 2012 versus when you're gonna hear them now, Antonina? I think it's so cool what Taylor's doing, like re-recording all of her music. I feel like I'm just reliving my childhood all over again. Um, I don't remember listening to Red too, too much. I think at that point, I just listened to Taylor's like popular songs. So obviously 22 and We Are Never Getting Back Together. Those songs were obviously on the radio all the time. So hearing them on the radio now it will just be such like a cool like flashback kind of. I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm excited to hear what this album. And I'm I'm so excited because the um what we have to record this music is so more advanced than it was back then. So I'm I'm guessing that the new like her new music is going to be so much more crispier and like cleaner and like maybe even different effects or like some kind of remix. But I'm so excited to like hear like the new updated version. I'm glad that she is not just like straight re-recording the albums and putting them out. She's not rushing it in any sense. I'm glad that she's putting in these vault tracks and songs from the era that no one got to hear initially. I think it just adds some excitement for the fans and it'll attract some general public um, attention as well. What do you guys listen to a new album, or, like just in general, not even Taylor? Do you listen to it full? Do you pick your favorites? Do you kind of skip around? How do you listen to an album cast? So first, it'll probably start off with me hearing it from like TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then that little section of the song, I'll learn it and I'll listen to it all the time. I'll go out and I'll search for it. I'll listen to that song and I'll start like going to the songs in the album around it. But that's usually how I would attack listening to those songs. Just like everywhere. Yeah. I think it really depends on the artist. I think like some of Lady Gaga's new albums, like you have to listen, like, or just some of the transitions mm -hmm. when you listen to it just in order are so like good and you wouldn't want to miss out on them if you just listen to it on shuffle. But if it's some like hip hop or rap album that I listen to, I probably won't listen to that in order. I'll probably just listen to the popular songs and then skip around and just listen to the other ones when yeah, I... Yeah, there's sometimes like less of a cohesiveness. Exactly. All, yeah, Chromatica is a great That's, example. I couldn't think I of the name. The big transitions in it. Um, I know a lot of fans are going to start with like the new tracks and then kind of go back mm -hmm. and relive the Red Era. Um, I'm very excited to see her on SNL. And I think, yeah, it's just exciting for both the fans and the general public as well. Very excited. And it yeah. comes out this Friday. Bella Hadid shared crying selfies to Instagram and opened up about her anxiety. She said in a post, social media is not real. For everyone struggling, please remember that sometimes all you got to hear is that you're not alone. Do you guys think that Hadid is accurate in her argument that social media puts up this wall for people to sh not show their authentic lives? Antonina, let's start with you. I think that she does have a good point because on social media you can make your life basically whatever you want it to be. You can make people see you however you want them to see you, not your real true self. But I also feel that social media can um, help people escape and show show their life and show the struggles and what they do go through every day which can ha ultimately at the end of the day help other people with their life. So I think yes and no to both. I think um, I am still in the mindset of having that perfectly captured picture, making sure it's edited right, you know, looking at the number of likes. That is just something that I have kept the motivation with when I'm on Instagram, but I really praise and envy the people who can post pictures that aren't as, like, aesthetically pleasing. Like, they're good pictures, but it's not like the way Instagram used to be. Like, they will post, like, blurry pictures or pictures of them in action or random pictures, and they don't really focus on a feed or heavy editing, and I really envy people like that. How do you guys run your Instagram, Kat? Um, definitely. 
I don't, I feel like I want to change mine up because I'm so stuck in this, you have to have like this and this and this, because this is what I expected to get so many likes. I want to like start stepping outside of the box and like start doing like new funner things with Instagram so that like I can enjoy it for me and not care so much about what other people are thinking about what I'm posting. I want to post what I enjoy posting. Good, good mindset. Answering that. Yeah, I love Instagram because I just I love editing pictures and like posting and interacting with other people. It's just fun for me. I used to only post like once every four months or like once every six months, and that was like by choice. Um, but for this Halloween, I had three different Halloween costumes, and I wanted to post all three. And I was like, can I post three days in a row? Yes, you can post three. It's literally my account. I can do whatever my, I want. But like in like having the mindset that I'm not allowed to post three days in a row is just kind of shows like kind of how society is, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I posted three days in a row. But that makes me question like what put that in our heads exactly. where we have to be this certain way. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no idea. Just um, I think it's also interesting. Like you were saying, you know, I think it's great that everyone loves to have that passion for editing pictures and mm -hmm. making sure they look good. But I think at the point where it becomes like an obsession, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that you're at that no, level, yeah. but um, I think that's that's the thing that can be tricky about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to um, Miss Hadid, mm -hmm. um, it was, I was so proud of her for posting that because if you guys know she struggles, her mother is very controlling about what she eats and she's very like, I feel like she, maybe verbally abusive or like mentally in a way about she's so like she brings her down whenever she like tries to like eat something because she's a girl who enjoys like having all these like fun meals and her mom just constantly puts her down and it's all so that she can be this perfect image in society's brain but it it doesn't matter I, I wish that her mom wasn't like that and I wish that she could just bloom into what she wants to be and not what her mother wants her to be. Yeah, I think it's great that Bella is using her platform to be a role model and be a voice. I've always appreciated influencers and famous people that do that, and yeah, I can give her a lot of praise for opening up like that because it's not easy. It's not, definitely. We thank you for watching this week's episode of Geo's View on Talent Television, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.